The title of this is called The Battle for North America. Now we have to look at what goes on in North America during the age of exploration just so we can get a sense of who and what is going to be going on in our country at that time. So European explorers, they traveled throughout the coast of North America and they recorded what they saw during the 14th and 15th centuries. Because they wrote such exciting stories and they told such tales about what they saw, many people wanted to explore North America for themselves. So by the time we get to the 1600s, you have people who are fighting for control of North America. You have countries such as France, the Netherlands, England, and Spain all attempting to gain control of North America. Now the two most powerful nations at this time are going to be Spain and England. So they're going to be the early explorers in North America. The other country that is going to join them and is going to have success is going to be France. Now, the British and the French out of those three countries were the winners of the exploration of North America. They gained control of the most territories between those three countries. Now, the territories that they gained, it made Britain and France extremely rich because they found natural resources that they did not have in England. The French settled what, is, what was known as New France in Canada. They occupied a lot of territory in North America. The French founded most of the territories that we now know as Canada and parts of Michigan and even territories down to Louisiana. The French were more friendly towards Native Americans and they even tried to convert most of the Native Americans to Christianity. The French had a friendly working relationship with the Native Americans. The French focused on trapping, um, killing fur or killing animals to get their furs and selling those furs back to to the French back in France and they became very profitable and rich from that. Um, the French colonies grew very slow. They didn't grow rapidly because people were still hesitant to come to this new territory. The French ended up gaining and creating an empire in what we know as North America that stretched from Canada all the way down to Louisiana in the southern part of North America. The French, they sent over many officials to help them set up governments and to set up um, a system of control. Even though they did all this, the French territories remain small in comparison to what we are going to find out and what we're going to look at as far as the 13 colonies. Now, the 13 colonies were established by the English or by England or Great Britain. The English settled along the Atlantic sea coast of North America, and the English set up colonies different than the ones that the French set up. The English practice what is known as salutary neglect. Salutary neglect is when you leave a group of people to their own vices or to their own ideas about how they should govern themselves. So the English did not send any officials over to the New World or to the English colonies to help set up governments over there. The people who were going to the, the new colonies in, in North America, they were just escaping on their own. They were trying to escape religious persecution. They were trying to make money. So they went without really consulting with the government of England first. So the people who were establishing these colonies in North America for the English, they were establishing and creating their own identity. The English who come to North America, as I just said, they were trying to, to make money or they were trying to escape religious persecution. Most of the people in these territories were coming from lands that practiced the absolute monarchy, which means the king controlled everything. And so the king was controlling how much money they could make and how they practiced their religion. And since those people wanted to freely practice their own religion or make as much money as they wanted to, they had to leave England and go to North America to search for that dream. The first colonies were Roanoke, which we're going to know as the Lost Colony. The second one was Jamestown, which was the first successful colony. And then the third colony we didn't know is Massachusetts Bay Colony. And this was a colony that was established for religion or freedom, for freedom of religion, excuse me. And this is the story that we know of as the pilgrims and Thanksgiving when they come over on the Mayflower. Uh, by the 1700s, there were 13 English colonies established in North America. So that's going to end with the notes. The big questions we need to look at is would the English colonists be able to survive in a state of nature? What people would oppose the English from residing in the new world? 
And are these established colonies going to be united with one another? That's it for today.